To the pointers, thank you for joining me again. This is a very special video, um, but it's also a very long video, as you'll see. Um, but I do recommend that you watch the whole interview because it's full of extremely useful tips and information and advice on how to pass the C2 Proficiency Cambridge English exam. Um, so you may not be able to watch the whole video in one go, but you can watch it over, over a few days um, and come back to it. And also I will put the timestamps um, related to each question that I ask in the description so you can go directly to the, the questions that interest you most. But as I said, I think you should watch the whole video, it's very useful. Um, so thank you again to Marie, Sylvia, Michael and Jeroen, very generous with their time. And without further ado, let's watch the interview. Okay, so let's do this. Um, I have a very special treat for all the viewers at home today because I have not one, not two, not three, but four successful C2 proficiency Cambridge English exam students, that's CPE students, who have very kindly agreed to share their experiences and their knowledge and their tips um, of the exam. Um, and I should mention the, all these guys are from the Telegram group that we have, which it's great for, for people to, to get to share, share tips with each other. But I have to say I'm particularly grateful to these guys because they passed the proficiency and they continued in the group just to help out other people. And then they agreed to do this, this video, this interview. So I'm really, really grateful to all of you. Thank you for doing this. Um, I think well, really what I want from this is to get the, the student's perspective because I can give my perspective as a teacher. You know, I've helped many people prepare for the exams. Um, and I also interviewed Frank, the, the exam expert. But now I think this, will, this is a really great opportunity to get the student's perspective on you know, how to prepare, you know, how to pass the exam, because you are all successful proficiency students. So I just wanted to start just with um, some introductions. So just like you to tell me um, who you are, where you're from, and when did you take the exam? So Jerun, perhaps you could start, please. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, my name is Jerun, and I live in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. I took the exam in, um, what was it again? I have to look up the date, actually. Uh, in May. I took the right. exam in May and okay. got the results uh, about 10 days later, I think, or two weeks later. Right. Uh, yeah, I was very happy to pass. And yeah, that's it. I took it in Amsterdam. And it was and my I, first time doing a Cambridge exam. I'd never. It was your first time. Okay, interesting. Yeah. And I guess it was the computer based exam if you got the results so quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And Marie, what about you? Yeah. Um, I'm Marie and I am from Spain. And I took the test on the 10th of July. I also took the, uh, the computer based and I got my results. I think it was like, three weeks later or something like that but yeah. it was pretty quick yeah 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 and was it this your first Cambridge exam or had you taken the no it's not advanced? the first one technically I also took this new Cambridge test called lingua skill um, because I needed to prove my level of English like quickly kind of thing so I took it but I didn't really prepare for it it's a multi-level mm -hmm. test and so they just basically um, tell you your level so I got C1, which is the, it was the, uh, the highest. Okay, right. Yeah, I've, I don't know much about that lingual skill, but it's another Cambridge exam, but it's... Yeah, yeah it's, it's new. It's quick. pretty, pretty recent. Yeah, yeah. I need to, I need to find out more about that. But, um, what about you, Sylvia? Um, my name is Sylvia, obviously, and <laughs> I'm 23 years old and I'm from Italy and I sat the exam in June. And uh, I had taken another uh, Cambridge exam before. I took the B2. It was almost five years ago. Wow. <laughs> five years ago, I took the B2 exam and I was four points away from the C1. Right. And uh, the speaking part dragged me down. <laughs> really? <laughs> but, yeah, but it was the, the B2 and that's it. And so that you decided to skip the, the, yes, the, the C1, C1 advanced and go straight for proficiency. And that was a, a good decision, obviously, yeah. because you, you passed. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Michael? 
Um, yeah, my name is Michael. I also took the exam in uh, early July, so about a month ago. Um, yeah, I, I'm from Austria, by the way. Uh, I almost forgot. <laughs> okay. And it was my first Cambridge exam. Okay, right. Thank you. My next question, I think it's an important question because, well, I think I'll just ask it and you can, I think your answers will, will explain why it's important, I think. But the question is, why did you decide to take the, the proficiency exam? Uh, Marie, let's start with you this time. All right. Um, well, it's, it's hard to say, really. There, is, there are a lot of reasons. Um, in my, like, in my case, it was because I did something very related to English at uni, and it was just a very good certificate to have in terms of finding a job teaching English, for example, here in, in Spain, or mm. even if, if, if I wanted, which might happen, if I wanted to go to a British university for a master's or something, they ask you to have either the IELTS or the C2 proficiency. So it was just a good certificate to have in my in my case, so that's why. And also a personal channel, the challenge. Right. So, of course, that was also a reason. Yeah, I think it, that's why I asked, because it's, I think it's important to have a clear reason, a clear why, as they say, for taking the exam, to, to be able to motivate yourself for however long you need to pass the exam. So, yeah, obviously, you had a few different reasons. Marie, I, I, I think you told me before that you, you lived in, in England, didn't you? For, yeah. Where did you live and for how long? Um, I lived in Birmingham for about nine months. Um, nine months right. And so, yeah, that was just, it just helped a lot, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I can hear in nine months, you picked up the, the Brummy accent a little. So it's nice. It's a nice accent. So it's a bit very Peaky Blinders. <laughs> um, and Sylvia, why did you take the exam? I took it for the same reason as Marie, but also because um, the pandemic, of course, took its toll on my studying career and I had to take a year of university. And since since I had a lot of time, of sort of free time on my hand, I decided why not? Why not take the C2 level that is the most difficult one and the most requested one I think and have it in my curriculum and uh, because of course it adds value to my career to my curriculum and of course I am studying languages in uni and uh, I thought it was the last step to take for my English career mm -hmm. right yeah, it's it's definitely I think well definitely I, I think it's the most prestigious mm -hmm. exam obviously the highest level you can attain and I think compared to the other exams it's the most respected and, and prestigious so once you've got that yeah it's it's a huge advantage yeah. for many for many reasons but um yeah so Michael what about you um yeah for for similar reasons um personal reasons a challenge like uh, Marie said but uh, also kind of to bolster my CV a little bit um because I find it kind of hard to assess yourself so mm -hmm. i figured why not make it official and get a certificate for it sure. basically okay right and jeroen similar or? yes but it kind of it fell into my lap in the sense that um i wasn't really planning on doing the exam i'd never even heard of it but at the time i was working in a in a primary school here in amsterdam which happens to be bilingual. So the pupils are taught in both Dutch and in English. So every couple of months, uh, a couple of teachers take um, uh, an English test, the Cambridge exam test. And mm -hmm. uh, well, I was lucky enough that there was a spot still open or this spot came available as I was just starting there. Uh, and the head of the school offered me that, that spot. And then I thought, well, actually this, this would be great uh, maybe for my career, because I also teach uh, Dutch to expats. So I use English a lot when I'm teaching. Right. Um, so that's, that's always good. Um, but yeah, definitely also to challenge myself. I always had the, I, the impression that my English is at a reasonable level, but I thought this was a great opportunity to yeah, really put a, put a number on it mm -hmm. myself and uh, yeah, see where I'm, where I'm at, actually. Yeah, I think that's interesting because... 
it, there's a, a debate, and I'm not sure where I stand on, on whether it's a good idea to to study for and, and take exams in general, but English exams in particular, whether it really helps your general, you know, development of or progress in in the uh, you know in the learning process. Um, and I think, yeah, what a Can lot I of... add something to that? Sure, Because yeah, yeah. That's actually what's, what struck me when I was first starting. Uh, so I did an exam training. It was like a 15-week uh, course. Like we had an hour and a half of lessons uh, every week. Yeah. Um, and it struck me that it's actually not so much of learning English. Of course, you learn English. But I think my English maybe increased maybe 2% or something. Yeah. But it was mainly really training for the exam. It's really mm. getting used to... Uh, how the exam works, how it is scored, the, the particularities of how to write an essay and all those things, which I'm sure some of which we will cover yeah. on any conversation. But um, so I do feel I learned a bit, but not as much as I as I expected in the beginning. It's really an exam. It was really an exam training for me. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Yeah. I mean, the, the big question is whether your time would have been better spent just studying English or improving your English in general or whether because there's one thing studying for an exam to get the certificate and for whatever reasons as you've spoken about and another thing is, is whether you, it really improves your level or if it could in some cases interrupt your your learning process but different people some people need the motivation that, that it can provide but um and and it's a fact we, it, it, it's a huge benefit if you can get the certificate so mm -hmm. Whether it's good for your English learning or not, it's a reality that we need. Or some people need to, to have the certification um, and it helps. It, it's, it's nice to have it too. As, as a, a few of you said, it's nice to, to prove to yourselves your level and, and just to check it off your list. So uh, some a lot of the questions I have for today are from other members of the Telegram group, so other proficiency students who are still in the preparation stages. Um, so the next question I have is from Elisa. Um, and she asked this, it's a very common question and it's not that easy to answer, I don't think, but let's see. So how long, how long did it take you to prepare for the exam? Um, well, uh, Sylvia, let's start with you this time. Well, I, I'd say for five months more or less mm -hmm. because I wasn't like sweating blood every day but uh, I did practice every day because I wanted to get as constant as possible like maybe one day just listening one other day just practicing some English um, grammar maybe but it was like on and off five mm -hmm. months on and off not every day every single day And uh, it was really stressful at the beginning because I was failing everything since it is it's a really high level exam. It's so difficult that mm. you are not prepared enough to take it. But I think everyone is still learning and I'm still learning even if I, I uh, took it and uh, I don't really know. For me, it was five months, but maybe for other people, it could be two months or three years. It's yeah. not a really easy question to, to answer. It's, it's, an says. it's an impossible question to answer, really. I mean, everybody is different. And Well, I'll, I'll let you all answer, and I'll, I'll give my, my thoughts on it in a moment. But yeah, thank you, Sylvia. And, and Michael, what about you? Um, to be honest, I... I only prepared for about two weeks because I kind of uh, decided to do this exam on a whim, basically. Uh, um, I kind of got this idea in my head and then I checked the exam dates and basically the deadline for application was like in two days. So, yeah, I, I just applied and uh, then studied for like two weeks. Um, Like Jeroen said, uh, mostly to get to know the the procedure of the exam and yeah. Yeah. Well, it worked for you, just two weeks preparation. I wouldn't recommend that for everybody. Mm -hmm. but... No, it, it was, yeah, it, it was stressful on, and of course I, I would have liked a little more preparation time, but yeah, it, yeah. it worked out in the end, so. 
Yeah, I mean, and you mentioned, I mean, it, it's, and Jeroen mentioned before, it's a, a lot about getting to know the exam. As, as I've said many times in my videos, it's, you may have the, 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 the level, but really the preparation is just getting to know the exam, the format, and exactly what the, what Cambridge want from you, what they want you to do. So, so yeah, well, very, very well done for passing with only two weeks preparation, but um, that's, that's very good. And Jeroen, what about you? So I took a course which took also about four months and was a weekly, uh, weekly class. Mm -hmm. I think I spent probably three hours total every week, maybe, yeah. including homework. Um, but like I said, it was mainly exam prep. Uh, it was actually a course that was preparing me for the C1 exam. Uh, but mm -hmm. at the last moment, a bit like Michael, I, I decided, well, I think my level is actually a bit higher than what I'm preparing for because I'd been doing uh, some um, sample tests online, right. engaging my scores. Um, so I felt reasonably confident that I could also do C2. So at the last minute I switched like a week before the exam. And then I spent a week, which was pretty intensive to uh, get to know all the differences between the C1 and the C2 uh, exam. So a lot of practice tests and a lot of, uh, um, yeah, just finding out how the exam works as mm -hmm. opposed to the, the, the other one. Yeah. So my answer would be four months, but then again, I also feel like, you know, I've been learning English for my entire life. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and I guess that is what, what gets you to, to a certain level. Um, yeah, it, just being exposed to English for a certain amount of time. Uh, that determines your level and then you just need a couple of weeks or months to to get used to how the exam works that that's how it functions in in my mind yeah I, that that's something i was going to say of course you've been preparing all your lives or, or since your first first english class or your first exposure to english because that's how you get a proficiency level you can't study for four months or two weeks or whatever and get to a proficiency level you need the level first and then focus on preparing for the exam because as i've said in other videos that many people have an advanced level but don't pass the cambridge advanced many people have a proficiency level but don't pass the proficiency because they don't understand the exam they don't know the mm. format so you need both things you need the level and the understanding of the exam so and yeah to get to a proficiency level you need years and years and years um, and mari what about you yeah, so, um, well, the idea of um, taking this test was kicking around, I would say, like, probably two years ago. But it wasn't until last year that I actually decided that I wanted to take it. But then I got two jobs. And so I was, I was juggling too many things at the same time. So I've been also just like Sylvia, very on and off. So, for example, in September, I tried to get a tutor. But then I, in October, I stopped. But then in November, I started preparing a C1 student myself. And so I was like getting that input kind of thing. So yeah. I, it's weird. It's, it's hard to say. Like, I don't know how much time actually took me mm -hmm. uh, yeah. to prepare for the test. But it, I didn't sign up for the test until I think it was like a month, a month before the test. So it was right. very, very, uh, time was very tight. indeed. Yeah. yeah, a bit last minute. But but again, you, you did it. So well done. But I think that's interesting thing you said there that you, you were teaching or you were helping uh, somebody else exactly. prepare for the Cambridge exactly. exams. Yeah. And that was my way of studying as well. It is weird. No, it's, it's probably one of the best ways. To, that's how you really get to know the exam is by, by well, anything. You really learn something by teaching mm -hmm. it because you need, you need to understand it exactly. in order to teach it. So, so that's good. Yeah, I think that's very interesting what you've all said. And I think, of course, it, how long it takes to to prepare for the exam depends on so many things. It depends on your starting level. It depends on how much time you can dedicate. I mean, Sylvia, you said you were doing something every day uh, and that's you, often that's necessary. I mean, so if you can only do like two days a week, it's going to take you a lot longer to prepare. And if you, mm -hmm. if you start with a lower level, it's so it's very difficult to, to put a, 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 you know, a real, time on it but um but yeah you'll you'll it's very interesting because you've all have very different um experiences with that um the next question uh, it's another quite common question it's just 
um, where to where to start. I, ha I did make a video on this, um, but again, that's from the teachers' my my perspective, and I'd like to. It will be very interesting to get the students' perspective. But where do you start? I mean, it's, it's quite a big exam. What what do you do? What's the first first step, Michael? Let's start with you this time. Um, yeah, I can recommend uh, doing a sample exam. There are official sample exams on the official Cambridge English website. Yeah. And this kind of helps you to assess yourself, gauge your level, kind of. You can see, hey, are they way out of my league or are they not that hard for me? So, yeah, that would be a first point to start kind of yeah. um then yeah like we mentioned previously uh, really familiarize yourself with the whole procedure of the exam um there are a lot of youtube videos of course this Ben channel um great resource um yeah there are also other channels but um there are not any there are no there are no, there are no, there are no other channels <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, you, you, go on if you if you do if you can recommend any other channels, that's fine. I won't be uh, I won't be angry. But um, maybe I I can uh, touch on this a little later when we come to specific tips. Okay. Um, but yeah, like I said, uh, YouTube videos and also the Telegram group, like Ben mentioned. And yeah, that's yeah. about it. The, yeah. the first steps. Good, good tip. Yeah, I definitely agree with the sample papers. I think that's. Mm -hmm. the best way to get to know the exams and then you can at the end also of your preparation i recommend you start and end your preparation with a sample exams i think but yeah we're talking about where to start and jerun where do you have any tips on where to start here well similar tips really um i, I think mock exams were uh, uh, were really great um if i had to do it all, all over again i would probably start with mock exams but i mm -hmm. happened to be enrolled in a course so that was my first encounter with um, how the exams work. Yeah. Um, so I, I could definitely recommend taking a course. It, it helped me, but I don't think it's, it's super necessary. I think you can prepare on your own. And then I think mock tests are the way to go and um, really make sure that you have an answer key so you can really um, see what scores you would have gotten and see where your weak points are yeah. um, to work on that. Because I think no one is, is perfect in every uh, part of the exam. Mm. Um, and then you can uh, improve those. Perfect. Yeah, I agree completely. Yeah. Mari? Um, sorry, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> where where did lost. you start? <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Um, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah. I would say um, getting to know your level is very important. Because, of course, you, know, you get high C1s, lower C1s, intermediate C1s, if that makes sense. Um, mm. So it's very important to know where you are. Um, and so that's the, f the first thing that I did uh, myself, just get to know. And of course, you can do that by taking a mock exam, like they said. Um, and then, of course, I would personally, I would follow a book. Like I would work uh, through a book just because all the information is gathered. Um, mm -hmm. And so you don't need to worry kind of thing. Mm. Um, it's just more like tidy and more, more organized. organized. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, okay, that's yeah. actually that's actually a good point that Marie mentioned. Um, there are also a couple of um, uh, tests designed specifically to to gauge your level, which are usually pretty short tests, like twenty five questions. And there are a couple of ones that you can find online, and I found them to be pretty accurate. I mean, all of them told me that I was a C two level, and it turned out that that was also uh, the exam that was right for me. Mm. Um, so I think that's a pretty good first indicator. So maybe, yeah, that should be the first thing that you do if you start all by yourself. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can I, can I chime in here real quick? Please, um, yeah. yeah. Like, like Jeroen said, um, in, in my case, um, the, my center also offered a, a free assessment test and also kind of free counseling. So I was able to talk to them for like 30 minutes and yeah, it were, was completely free. So maybe um, your center offers this as well. It's worth a try. Um, yeah. yeah, I guess that, that's a, a big doubt that people have when they're choosing mm -hmm. an exam is, you know, do, do I have that level? It's very, you can have an idea of your, your own level, but um, 
that's why yeah it's good to do the sample test but if you can if you can get a level test and, and a you know professional can tell, tell you yes go for the c2 or you no know, maybe it's best the c1 for you that's um yeah good advice what about you sylvia where where would you say well, it's how to I, start i would say i would say the same so yes find your english level before starting to work on whatever exam you are taking of course but uh, for example i'd say uh, to find a group uh, to find someone you can study with you can practice with so you can be motivated and motivate others because by myself uh, i wasn't going anywhere i was like okay i wrote this now what mm. it's not mm. it's you you are there and uh, if you are with someone else uh, even if you don't know them if you don't know them i think it's better because you can start knowing each other and uh, start working on your exam without being uh, I don't know without being stressed about what they are going to think about me. Yeah. But yes, uh, I I would have said the same about uh, um, about assess your level. But of course, find someone, find a group where you can talk freely in English, and not don't be afraid of taking the first step because taking the first step is speaking in English. It's not like uh, Mm -hmm. It's not difficult, but mm -hmm. I can understand that it's a big obstacle to say, yeah, I want to do this exam. Now what? Mm -hmm. What is the next step to do this? Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. So to find other people, mm -hmm. other like-minded people. Yeah. Well, that's why I, I love this Telegram group. Um, I think now we have over 600 members. So you can find people in your in your city or town, your neighborhood, Or friends at school but you know we have people from all over the world in the telegram group and people are organizing their own uh, study groups speaking also there's a one of the members has started a discord server recently which i don't really understand because i'm too old but i know it's popular with with kids but um so <laughs> i'll put i'll put the link to both the telegram group and the discord server in the description to this video but so that yeah that's a great opportunity for people. I, I always recommend to find a study partner, um, but yeah, find a study group even better, more through. Uh, what was the hardest part of the exam for you? Um, Jeroen, let's start. I think we're back to you for the start. Um, for Very me, similar. it was the writing part because um, in practice, I could never uh, get under the time limit. I would write great uh, essays and stuff and my teacher would mark them and compliment me on my language and say it was uh, really uh, um, by the book and everything, um, which was, of course, nice to know. But I also knew that it took me like twice as long uh, to finish um, as, um, as you were allowed. Right. So it really was a struggle to get under the time limit. Right. So that was what uh, I spent most of my, well, the last couple of weeks on, basically, to, to get under the time limit. Right. And um, yeah, finally, in the exam, I'm, that was probably the first time that I actually managed to write two pieces of writing uh, in uh, an hour and a half. Um, so well it, it paid off, but it was definitely uh, hard work for me, yeah. Right. So you, you, it's like training for a marathon. No, you peaked mm -hmm. just just at the right moment. Yeah. So you got yeah. it right on yeah. the day. But yeah. well, let's talk about that a bit more because my next question is about tips for each part. And we can do this with the writing from you now. But So what did you do? How did you, was it just practicing lots of lots of sample exams or, or did you, did you prepare a, yeah. um, a strategy? So, well, real quickly, like I said, first I was preparing for the C1 level and there the exam is a little bit different. You have two mm -hmm. uh, writing uh, parts. The first one is always an essay and the second one is a, a choice of, I think, four different ones. Yeah. Um, so I think you have to, I think there are five options total, but you only have to practice really four to be mm -hmm. on the safe side because in the second part you get a choice of I think two of two or three. I think it's three. Um, you get a choice three. of three. Yeah, the choice. Yeah. Of three. So I, I forget the exact numbers, but yeah. you don't have to practice all of them uh, and still be fully prepared. So you 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 can always choose something that you've prepared for. Um, 
um, but all, that also kind of goes for the for the C2 exam, I think. You just have to be familiar with all the, um, the different uh, options. Mm -hmm. um, I actually found that the C2 exam is a little bit uh, easier, at least the way I prepared it, because uh, there's also an essay which has certain uh, a certain structure that you can just learn. Um, and um, the second part, one of the options is that you can uh, read a book or one, one of two books. Yeah. Uh, and they're even uh, so, um, uh, how do you say, lenient that you can also, or you're also allowed to just watch the movie. Uh, so I chose one of those. And I watched the movie and an analysis and the director's commentary. And I, I took some notes myself. So I already had a lot of um, knowledge in my head uh, about that book. It was um, the book about a boy. Uh-huh. Um, so my idea was I'm going to finish the essay in like 45 minutes and then I'm going to do the, the, the second part and um, I'm going to check, I'm going to see what all the options are. Maybe there is also the option to write a review of my favorite movie and I can always mm -hmm. do that. Yeah. But at least uh, I have, as a backup plan, I have the option to write everything I know about um, about a boy in this case. Yeah. Um, so I felt really, really good going in that I had um, knowledge of what I was going to write about for the second part. So that really helped. And another tip that I would give is um, um, get your practice writings uh, uh, checked or corrected by a professional uh, reviewer. Mm -hmm. um, I was lucky enough to have a course. So my, uh, my teacher would, uh, would give me notes every week by mm -hmm. the way, shout out to uh, uh, Shane Patrick because he was a very good uh, teacher. Mm -hmm. um, he teaches in Amsterdam and he gave me very good feedback. And also in the last week, I sent uh, um, an essay to you, uh, Ben, uh, mm -hmm. to get some, uh, to get some uh, uh, notes. Um, and that, that really helped me. And why do I emphasize that it should be a professional reviewer? Well, I think it's of course also nice to, to give it to your peers or the person you're practicing with and they are going to point out mistakes or things that just sound funny. Um, but I think it's really important that someone really points out exactly what's wrong with it. Uh, someone who doesn't miss anything and um, really knows the, 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 yeah, the rules behind it. Um, mm -hmm. I think that was super useful for me to, um, to have uh, corrections at a, at a very high level. Right. Yeah, that's good. Uh, just before we move on, uh, did you or has it have any of you used the um, Write and Improve um, website from Cambridge? Have you have you heard of that? I have. I haven't. Well, I've I haven't used it, but I've heard of it, and oh. some people really like it. I don't know. Yeah, I've heard mixed mixed reviews. Some people like it. Uh, um, some people say it's not very. It's not perfect. I think it's. I think it's kind of like artificial intelligence or something. You get immediate feedback, so it can't be a real teacher sitting there reading very yeah. quickly. But, um, <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I just wondered if if you had any experience, but no. Um, yeah, thanks for that, Jeroen. Very interesting. Uh, well, before yeah, before we move on from the the writing, or maybe other more of you are going to speak about the writing. But did any of did 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 any of you, apart from Jeroen, do the set test, set text part? Yeah, Michael, you said you did. Yeah. Um, yeah, I also read about a boy. Um, I can highly recommend it because it's kind of a, a contingency plan, so to speak. Because yeah. then you know there's at least one topic you are knowledgeable in. Because yeah. there are often like weird topics, for example, like. Um, write a report on some volunteer work you did mm. and like if you have never done it you you had to you have to make something up which is mm. kind of hard it's it's much more uh genuine if you would talk about your own experience or like i said something you know something about like the the set text so yeah i, I can highly recommend that too yeah it's interesting yeah marie and sylvia did you did you read the set text or as jeroen says watch the film you don't have to necessarily read it yeah. um i didn't personally but i think it's a good idea just because mm. at least here i find that nobody like really does them kind of thing like nobody picks the um the set text just because i guess it can be seen as a waste of time because mm. you know 
you have a lot going on you have a lot to study a lot to um to brush mm-hmm. upon and so why would you if the, i don't know if that makes sense does it make sense mm-hmm. like yeah yeah yeah, yeah it we'll makes see. sense yeah i think it makes sense i understand but but yeah i think in the end that extra effort yeah it, it pays off yeah pay, totally. pays off and it makes totally. yeah, you, gives you more confidence in the exam and you feel maybe less less nervous in the, the mm-hmm. writing part because you as, as michael and jeroen said they have that that guaranteed sort of yeah, contingency plan. So S- Sylvia, you didn't do the set text either, no? No, no, no. I didn't do I didn't do them because I, I I don't really know why, but I thought it was a waste of time, like Marie said, but not is in a bad way. But mm. I wanted to do the other things, maybe to challenge myself more. Mm-hmm. But. Uh, um, listening to their reasoning I think I should have done that <laughs> just to be sure just to be okay I don't know what to write about these three tasks Yeah, I read the book I watched the film whatever okay I can write about uh, this book I can write about this film yeah. with this movie I don't know but maybe yeah maybe I should have just um, I should have done it. Yes. Now, <laughs> now that I listened to them, because I I didn't even thought about the, doing them. Yeah. Taking the the set. Test. Yeah, it wasn't an option for me. Yeah. Uh, just because time was so tight, so I was just mm-hmm. yeah, you know, I'm just going to practice like reading and use of English and listening. Um, yeah. And I kind of like neglected writing a little bit. That was mm. one of my um, mistakes as well. All right. Well. You you'll pass. Yeah, Michael. Sorry, go on. Um, yeah, about about the time investment. Um, of course, if you read the book, it's um quite some investment. But for about the boy specifically, there's uh, some kind of uh, abridged audio book, which is like two and a half hours. So it's not that much time investment if you if you listen to this audio book. Um, yeah, the. What, what you get out of it, in my opinion, is a lot because, like we mentioned, you are kind of um, safe because you know one topic already. Yeah. yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, I mean, I guess you don't need, I don't want to give bad advice. So, um, Jeroen and Michael, as you did it, but you don't need to have a very deep understanding of the book. You don't need to give a deep, go, go, I mean, if they accept, you know the the film. I guess it's not like you have to take notes on each page. It's 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 just a short text that you need to write. So it's you know quite. I mean, is that is that right, Michael and Jeroen? Do you think it's it's so you know with the the summary or the the film that's enough? Yeah. Um, well, yeah, for me it worked. Um, I didn't listen to an abridged version, but I I did watch the movie, which is about. An hour and a half, two hours. I think I, then I also watched it with the director's commentary, um, yeah. just to have a little bit more background. And I watched a YouTube video of about 10 or 20 minutes, which was quite analytical, kind of a summary of the book, but also an analysis. Uh, so that happened to be available for, for this one. Mm-hmm. And um, because I've been doing some, some mock tests, I um, uh, noticed that um, it helps if you really understand the characters in a book because usually they will ask something about or that that was at least my experience uh, they will ask to write something about how the characters interact or how they differ from each other about their personality so I paid specific attention to that made sure that I had in my head how I would describe them if that question would come up um, and then I think you already have a pretty good basis. You then you know the plot, and you know yeah. uh, you have a couple of things to say about their personalities. Um, well, then already just by describing them, you have so much vocabulary, and then mm. it's just a matter of fitting it into the correct um, structure. I mean, sometimes you need to write an article which is a bit more open. Sometimes it's really a review. I think. Mm. Um, but um, yeah, just uh, just having access to the vocabulary because you thought of it. Uh, you gave it some thought ahead of time uh, mm-hmm. really helps and yeah it doesn't really take uh, that much time i think mm-hmm. well and, and you you can enjoy it too i mean you, you read a book it's it's a nice I, I read that book many many years ago and it's it's a nice book to read so it's not it was fun i watched yeah. the movie on date night so that was uh win right. well there you go yeah, yeah. you got <laughs> killing two birds with one stone yeah or maybe three yeah but um but yeah some very good advice there 
Um, so we go back to the original question, which is the, the, the hardest part of the exam for you. So Mary, what was your what was the hardest part for you? Yeah, um, I was going to say writing is normally the hardest part for pretty much everybody, like just because they get very, very picky, very strict when marking mm. it. Mm. Um, also, because time, of course, is, you know, you have to take it into account. Um, but for me, mm. I believe it was I would say it was listening. It was listening, not because not because I couldn't understand the audio or what the people were saying, but because the answers, they just mentioned them all. Like it's very <laughs> subtle. It's about it's about attitude. It's about sometimes even sarcasm. You know, it's mm. very very subtle mm. um, to get to know which one is the right one. Like you really need to have a native level in order to. At least that's how I, that's how I find it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. It, it's, it's it's the typical Cambridge exam and other exams, but it, it, I, I'm not saying they're trying to trick you, but they they are trying to trick you. <laughs> okay. They're trying to yeah, like totally, certainly, yeah. Yeah, maybe. I think. I mean, you say you need to be a native speaker. I know native speakers. I myself included. You know, if if I weren't an English teacher who helps people prepare for the exams, I would would have found it difficult i know most native speakers if you just ask them to do the listening today without any preparation without really understanding the exam they would struggle because it's not clear sometimes you, you have to there are nuances or subtle, <laughs> very subtle differences which uh yeah that's really comes with training with you know preparation doing as many as possible and getting to know you know that, that how nasty the cambridge exams mm -hmm. can be how they <laughs> To try to to play their game um but but yeah that's that's interesting sylvia what about you what was the hardest part hardest part for, um, you? for me the hardest part was use of english but because i was extremely worried since in every mock exam i have done i i got the bare minimum for the c2 level i was really struggling in this part in particular and uh, I didn't really know what to do about it because it's not like listening. Okay, uh, you watch some videos, you listen to music or I don't know, reading, you read a book, you read something. But use of English is specifically grammar and uh, vocabulary. It can be anything. Really. Yeah, it, it can, can be, be anything. anything. That's the problem. It's very hard to study for that because it can, mm -hmm. it can be anything. It can be a phrase of verb, it can be an idiom, it can be these like really weird yeah. expressions. You know, or this collocation, it's just... Yes, yeah. yeah, exactly. And the thing that I've done, it just read, 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 practice, practice, practice. And I did like an ungodly amount of mock tests, just the, English, the use of English part. Mm -hmm. And I wrote down whatever, whatever new expression I bumped into. Where, uh, write it down and... Uh, make some make up some phrase just to memorize it and uh, i really did that every day and uh, it really paid off big time mm. because i i actually got a really good results in in the use of english while in the listening part, I was extremely um, sure about my my skill in English in in the listening part, but it was really really difficult because, as Maria said, it was really s subtle what you have to write and what you have to choose from. Mm -hmm. The questions were so similar, and uh, in the meantime, that you are trying to understand what they are asking you, the audio go, the audio goes, just goes on. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like you, you're actually reading the answers mm -hmm. while the people are talking, and it's like you mm -hmm. know, it's like your yeah. brain can't cope with so many like tasks at the same time. You know. It's multitasking. Yeah, you, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's really hard. Yeah, yeah. the first the first part was really. I was panicking because okay, I didn't understand anything of what they said. It's not that I don't, I didn't understand it. That part, I don't know. Yeah, he said, she said this, but she said also this. So yeah. these two questions, these two answers are correct. No, it yeah. can be. 
But yeah, for me, the hardest part to um, to prepare for was the use of English, and right. it was really uh, it was really hard to yeah to prepare for. Well, it, it's it's what you said. I mean, it's very difficult. Obviously, your your method paid off, but it, it's mm-hmm. you can learn all the idiom. Well, you can't you can't learn all the idiomatic expressions, all the phrasal verbs, or I mean, you can learn. A hundred, and there could still be a, a, a hundred phrasal verbs or mm-hmm. five hundred phrasal verbs, and there could still be one in the exam that you've never seen before. So, yeah. I think it's yeah, that's the real test. That's why you need to have the level before you before you even consider pre- preparing. But yeah, exactly. you did it. I mean, with the use of English, the the good with the Cambridge exams, the good news is that you can compensate. Often, I, in my experience, students sometimes fail the use of English or don't you know don't get the they get less than 60 percent but they compensate in other areas so obviously you want to do as well as possible in in all the parts but um it is particularly difficult I think Mm -hmm. as you said difficult to prepare for but I think actually doing mock tests um does help again Mm -hmm. just your brain gets more used to the types of questions and the types of answers that they're they're looking for because you can't really practice for use of English. It's not like speaking and speaking to you and practice and practicing speaking. Mm. It's so uh, rigid Mm -hmm. that, I mean, that's it. You know this phrase, you know this um, phrasal verbs, you know this collocation. Yes, you don't know it. Well, screw you. You You don't know it. (laughs) It's no gray area. No, it's it's all black and white. You know it or you don't. Well, can I... Add one small thing to that. Um, sure. I, I agree for for a large part, but um, there was also the um, uh, the part of the exam I forget which number, but where you have to um, rephrase something using um, between three to eight words. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, part four. Yeah, yeah. There was a huge struggle when I first started uh, started practicing. It got better over time, but. Um, um, what I found there when practicing, if I would look at the answer key, there was usually more than one answer mm-hmm. possible. Um, and at least that helped me, that, that put my mind a little bit at ease that I knew that I didn't have to be spot on, otherwise no points. Yeah. But you could uh, either have the first half correct and the second part not, you would still score one point because you yeah. also get two points for each um, uh, entry. Yeah. Um, and you can, uh, yeah, one point is also possible. And there are sometimes two or three possible answers. So I think for that specific part, mm-hmm. it's not necessary to be, um, yeah, to, to just have one correct answer. Uh, mm-hmm. Sometimes there are more, uh, more ways to, to answer it. That's true. That's true. Yeah. But sometimes they're looking for a, a particular phrasal verb. You need to get the right preposition. That is also true. Yeah. Yeah. But, it, but that's, I mean, that's, very important to know you get two points because some people mm-hmm. just look at it and think I have no idea I have no idea what what phrasal verb they want what expression but write anything because not, not anything but write something because you could could get um one point just mm-hmm. just by using the right verb tense maybe it's the passive or the, the conditional yeah, or whatever. also I think why some people I don't know if you recommend this also Ben but some people uh, some teachers also online recommend that you uh, I think you even start with uh, part four because it's quite difficult and you get the most points um, but maybe yeah. mix it up with with another but um, uh, yeah some people recommend that you start in a different order yeah well I, I've, I've recommended actually starting with part five okay because you, and then yeah if, I mean, it depends. I, I, I've recommended this a few times, and I want to be careful because every every student is different. But I, I, for the proficiency, it would be five, six, seven, then four, three, two, one, because I, the mm-hmm. the parts one and two you can do very quickly. If you're running out of time, you could do pretty quickly. It, it takes maximum five minutes, really. But for the the reading, five, six, and seven, you need you need time. You, you just need time to read. So that's going to take up a lot of time. And as you said, part four, you, you get more. If you spend a bit more time on it, you, you're, you're going to get more points. Whereas in part one, for example, if you don't know 
if you have the four words, you think, I don't know, S sitting mm -hmm. there for 10 minutes thinking about it is not going to help. You're just wasting time. So yeah. just choose something. You've still got a 25% chance of getting it right anyway. Hopefully you can reduce that to a 50% chance. But um, yeah, but yeah I, I agree with that. You don't necessarily need to start with part mm -hmm. one. Definitely. No. Well, re regarding the, the, the order, for me personally, um, I, I didn't feel like memorizing a different order to do them in but that was also because when i was doing practice tests again very important yeah. um was that way i found out that i that part usually went pretty quickly for me i could do it mm. in maybe 50 minutes or something so i knew i would have a lot of time left so yeah mm -hmm. i felt like i shouldn't bother with memorizing an order uh just start go through it really quickly uh, and then I knew I would have enough time, at least half an hour to just go over it again and review everything. Um, mm. So I've been doing that in practice and also during on the day itself. And I, I noticed at least I noticed at least I think two or three uh, answers that I changed um, when reviewing again. Right. And then I've just finished within the time limit um, and I had a perfect score. So it was actually a it, it was good that I made those uh, corrections. Sometimes you just, your first instinct is the best, but mm. uh, in my case, it helped to go over it again. Definitely. Mm -hmm. That's, that's very important advice. Yeah. If you have time, hopefully have just some time to go because you can correct yourself. That's an exercise I do with my students in class. You know, I, before I correct them that their writings or their, their any of the parts, it's I give them the opportunity to correct themselves and often they can correct 90% of the mistakes that they make themselves. So yeah, just to give yourself that time, I think, and yeah, as you said, it paid off for you because you, yeah, you, you did very well. So that, that's good. Very good advice. So, and Michael, what about you? What's the, what was the hardest part of the exam for you? Yeah, for me also the, the writing mm -hmm. uh, and the listening. Uh, no, not the listening, the, the speaking paper. Sorry. Really? Mm -hmm. um, because um, they don't just test your English skills, but you also have to be creative. So mm -hmm. they also test something entirely different. And for the, the speaking paper in particular, you also have to to really think on the fly uh, because the, the questions are really, I don't know, weird sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. for, for example, my, my question uh, for the long turn, I think it's called, where you have to talk two minutes ab about the question was something like, uh, what makes people do bad things and I was like okay now I have to talk about <laughs> this for for two minutes so yeah it's the, uh, it, 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 the, the, the the speaking paper is um, the most unpredictable in my mm -hmm. opinion and that's why it makes it difficult yeah the, the questions can be really really vague or abstract or mm -hmm. ambiguous it's true. Um, that, interesting talking about the long term, because this is something I've spoken with my students. You have this question and then you have three prompts or three ideas mm -hmm. that you, you, you can use if you want or if you need to. I usually recommend to my students that they only use those ideas if necessary or if, you know, if, they, if they don't have more to say, but to, just to focus on the question first. But but when you get a question like you got, Michael, what, what what did you do? I mean, did you just focus on the question, or did you go straight to the ideas? Um, yeah, I uh, during practice, I always, like you said, try to come up with um, my own topics or my own answers. But you only have ten minutes to. Mm. Uh, no, sorry, ten ten seconds. Uh, I wish it was ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> ten, ten seconds to to think about it, and and it, it's really hard not to kind of shift your eyes to, towards the prompts. So you you have to be really disciplined. And yeah, in in my case, I I had to use the prompts immediately. Right. But yeah, mm -hmm. it it kind of worked out. So yeah. It's difficult. I mean, if, if it's a very tough question or you just have no idea of what to say, then, then yeah, you can go straight to the prompts. But I think sometimes that, I, and I've seen this in, in the practice classes I give, it's, it's a distraction or it interrupts mm -hmm. your train of thought or the student's train of thought. They're just always thinking, what can I say about this idea instead of just relaxing you know, more or less and just talking about the, the question. So I mean, what, what about the other, while, while we're talking about the, the speaking 
what how did you do that particular part because i think that's quite a difficult part did you, did you look at the ideas first or just answer the question um, that part was difficult for me uh, too because the question was like what motivates people mm -hmm. and it was such a broad question i mean it's so difficult to speak about it for just two minutes and mm -hmm. be um, be uh, not rambling about it but be uh, precise be mm -hmm. disciplined as michael said and uh, i was like okay i cannot do it with my own uh, ideas because they are too much scrambled they are too much uh, yeah they are too much for uh, the english exams so i looked at the uh, at the prompt and they were really helpful because I think one was money and I said okay money I can talk about money every day <laughs> and uh, all day and um, but it was really stressful but when you start you start you just you speak and you speak and you speak and you speak you get in the zone right yeah you because it was really i was worried about that part too when i was doing the the, the speaking part with you ben mm -hmm. but i just said well i i practiced the the question is impossible it's really ridiculous this question but let's say how can i do it at my at my best mm -hmm. so i just oh. done it and it was so really stressful so <laughs> yeah but you but you passed so it it, it was yeah. it was good it's all good in the end i mean that's that's the good news with all of you that the results were good so you all passed the exams all this stress and difficulty but you did it so um what about you maria how, how was the speaking part for you yeah, um, I think that the um, the speaking part is difficult, just like uh, Michael said, because it's not only vocab and grammar, but also your own ideas. Like you have to, you really need to um, come up with good ideas, good things to say. And that was some, that was something that was actually worrying me a lot. Because what if I couldn't, you know, come up with something good to say, you know? Um, yeah. But I was, I was indeed, I was pretty confident with with the speaking. I, you know, I thought I was. I was all right kind of thing and yeah it, I was but um but yeah no I um what I did was just take like um like practice tests like I was mm -hmm. practicing with uh, some of my British friends thank mm -hmm. you <laughs> thank you from here shout um, out to them yeah. <laughs> exactly um but no yeah um I remember actually from my test um it was it was one of the warm-up questions but it got me all flustered it was something like why do you study English? And I was like, Jesus Christ, you know, I was, I got frozen because I know there is, I don't know, it's too many things to say, you know, <laughs> right. I, don't, I don't know, like, what, why do I study English? I don't know, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, I tried to yeah. like, yeah, I tried to um, keep a cool head and just like answer mm -hmm. kind of thing. But no, I really, I really like personally, I really struggle with um, like getting nervous and, and all mm. flustered. And so that was, that was a thing for me, but it went, it went without a hitch. So fantastic. So well done. Congratulations. Yeah, it's good. And what about you, Jeroen? Did, did you have any tips for the speaking in particular? No, I'm afraid not. It was my, uh, my worst um, part. Um, really? I mean, it's, uh, it still had a score that I would have would have been completely happy with going in, but um, I, I did feel at, on the day itself that it was uh, it, it didn't go as well as I had hoped. Um, so yeah, I think the long term I didn't do that as well as I could have done. Um, I was quite happy with how I handled the the part where you have to discuss uh, photographs. Maybe also because. Um, that's kind of similar to what you have to do when you practice for the, or when you do the C1 mm -hmm. exam. Mm -hmm. uh, so you discuss with your partner, you talk a bit about some photographs and um, yeah, I felt like I could really demonstrate some good vocabulary and have some nice insights and descriptions of photographs. Um, so that was, yeah, that was all well and good, but um, yeah, the long term, I was, I was really struggling. Yeah. I think uh, I've, during the day, I felt it went pretty well overall. And then the speaking part was the last 
part and i remember going in maybe a little bit too enthusiastic i was i was <laughs> Uh, right at the top, I was making one or two very s silly jokes, and I, I, I think maybe it came off as being too uh, too informal. I don't know if they already started counting um, uh, points or whatever, but mm. I, I felt like it, it. Maybe I should have had a bit more of a serious attitude uh, mm -hmm. going in. Oh, yeah, Tinchu, I don't know. I, I would I would have thought the examiners would like that because it's uh, you know they have to see so many students, and it must be quite boring for them. So to have you know. It's, uh, to lighten the, the mood a little bit, I thought mm -hmm. would be yeah, nice. But, but the thing is, they will always be completely stoic. If you, mm. if you say something hilarious, like I did, obviously, uh, or uh, <laughs> if you um, if you make a mistake, they will they will not give any reaction. So it was very hard to gauge for me if I was on the right um, uh, footing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I think they, as Frank said when I spoke to him, you know, they have their script. Each the, the examiners have their script. They have to follow because it has to be the same in every town every city every country um so maybe they're, they're told not to laugh they mustn't laugh they mustn't mustn't have fun i don't know but yeah i, I wouldn't think that's a big problem but um but yeah maybe be careful of that um i think cause max had a question on on the listening I, I think we covered max's question um and we've covered a lot of tips on on other parts um well can another... I, I would i would like to say something sure, about sure. listening if mm -hmm. i may um because um, what I found was listening was quite, was indeed quite challenging, and um, I felt it was uh, definitely diff more difficult than the um, the, the C1 um, exams that I practiced. Um, also, because it went a lot faster. Like on the day, uh, one of the um, uh, the audio uh, um, tracks that we heard just went so fast; it really uh, threw me off a little bit. Really. Um, um so i think you just have to pre be prepared for it pre mm -hmm. be prepared for that mm -hmm. and um what also helped me was kind of as a, as a through line really for the whole exam um i think um it's all about uh paraphrasing and and synonyms like in every part you have to be able to recognize paraphrases and synonyms to mm -hmm. answer questions uh, in the reading, uh, in the use of English part, but also when speaking and also maybe even uh, most of all uh, when doing the listening part, because um, yeah, even more than in the C1 exam, in the C2 exam, uh, in the audio, there will always be completely different words than on the answer sheet. Mm -hmm. There will never be a word that's exactly mm -hmm. the same. And if there is a word that's exactly the same, for example, the speaker uses a word like delighted and one of the answer options is also delighted, then that's <laughs> definitely not the answer. You discard yeah. that one, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's always, always synonym. So you really have to um, uh, put yourself in that mindset that you're com constantly looking for, mm -hmm. okay, what are other ways of saying this? What are other ways of saying that? Um, yeah. Which of these four answers um, says uh, that this person is delighted in a, in a different way. Um, and I think that is uh, the same for the reading part. Um, for the last part of the reading part, uh, you just need to look out for synonyms because the, the question is so, it's just one line mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, you, don't, you don't have much to work with. And so you just have to be on the lookout for synonyms. Yep. really synonyms i think you if you want to do the c2 you really have to be on top of your game with the syn uh, synonyms yeah and i think what helped me going in i i already um even when i'm not studying i i listen to podcasts a lot because i just like that as a as a as a medium and um what helped me was to um yeah to to listen to podcasts obviously and specifically to um to put them at like 1.5 times the the speed in some mm -hmm. apps you can do that i think on spotify you can do it in some apps you have to download the episode but then you can change up the speed and it just goes a lot faster but it's still um you can still understand it um and then when you switch back after like five minutes to the regular speed it just seems like it's going at a glacial pace and it's you, you think wow why are these people speaking in such a uh, <laughs> such a boring way so um it really helps to occasionally learn uh, or, or listen to podcasts at just a, a, a um uh, a faster than natural speed to to um yeah just to get you uh, a bit more 
alert, I think. Hmm. That's an interesting tip. Yeah. So again, it's like uh, like marathon training. No, sometimes you have to run quicker in the training than you do in, in the, the marathon itself, but you, so you're prepared. So yeah, I hadn't thought of that tip, but yeah, definitely listening to podcasts, listen to everything in English, of course, that for, for proficiency, you have to do everything in English anyway. Um, but yeah, very good tips there. Just a quick, quick, well, quick, as quick as, quick as you like, uh, but there's a couple of Telegram members asked this question. Uh, Zaira, I think that's the pronunciation, and Mohammed, Mohammed Dressa, Mohammed Dressa. Sorry about the pronunciation if that's wrong, but it's about books and materials. Um, what books and materials did you use and, and what would you recommend? Um, uh, I don't know where we are. I'll start with Michael this time. I'm, I'm not sure where we are. Um, yeah, I used the book Objective Proficiency. Mm -hmm. It's an official Cambridge book. Um, it contains a lot of exercises and tasks, and they are really tailored to this exam because, yeah, it's it's an official book. So, yeah, yeah. that really helped me. And like mentioned previously, also YouTube videos, mostly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, yeah, obviously my channel, first and foremost, that's that's very <laughs> uh, obvious. <laughs> I'm joking, but I mean, <laughs> if you did what, if you found any other channels useful, then then I, I don't mind you mentioning them here. Um, I, I think it's called English class or something like that. Um, I used it for practicing for the writing paper because uh, this guy kind of gave templates, so to speak, on each of the, the different types of texts. Okay. And yeah, I kind of adopted them and it was really helpful too. Yeah. Okay. I haven't heard of, well, maybe I, I probably have seen it, but English class, I'll, I'll look for that and share it in the description if I find it. Um, and Jeroen, what did you, I mean, you had very, I guess you had little time to prepare. You, you did the course, didn't you? But did you ha have any particular books? Well, yeah, the book that I used was actually uh, catered to the C1 advanced uh, level. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Gold um, mm -hmm. and you have in various editions. So this is the Gold C1 advanced uh, by the publisher Pearson. Mm -hmm. um, I do think it was quite useful. It helped, did help me prepare actually for a higher level as well because it contained uh, a lot of grammar and um, some really well, good exercises. But I think if you know from the start that you are going to go for C2, I would probably go for uh, something like the book uh, uh, Michael mentioned, Objective mm -hmm. Proficiency or, or, or something. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, that definitely helped. I watched a ton of YouTube videos. Uh, one channel that comes to mind, apart from uh, To The Point English, of course, is... Um, uh, uh, closely observe English. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know if you heard of that. I think yeah. I just checked, and he is not that active at the moment. Maybe mm. he will make start making videos again. But uh, just one guy who is also teaching classes and um, yeah, making videos with a lot of tips for I think uh, two or three different Cambridge levels. And yeah, um, yeah there's a lot, a lot of tips. But I also noticed there is quite some overlap between uh, several channels. Mm -hmm. uh, I do think that the way he explained things, I think his name is Christopher, uh, is, um, um, yeah, ju just to, um, were uh, best suited me, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I know that guy. Yeah, he's yeah. very, very clear in his explanations. Yeah. Yeah, yeah as you said, there are, there are quite a few, uh, some very specific channels for the Cambridge exams, some general English channels, which have some videos for the Cambridge exams. And yeah, there's going to be some overlaps. Um, but I think that's not a problem. It kind of reinforces if uh, that's, it's like anything, it, you, you know, you're not necessarily wasting your time if you see two videos explaining mm -hmm. the same thing, because it, the teacher will have a different way of explaining it and maybe a different, slightly different tips. But, um, but yeah, it's good advice. Marie? What did you did you use any books? Yeah, I um there is this book by um, National Geographic called uh, Close Up. So it would be mm -hmm. the Close Up C2. They have books for all levels and they are like Cambridge, like they point pointing towards Cambridge exams. Mm -hmm. Um so that was very useful. Um yeah, close up. And also I used uh, the same as as Michael, the objective proficiency. Yeah. And then in terms of YouTubers, I didn't really 
watch mm, lots of videos. Well, I watched some of yours, Ben, um, and they were very, very useful. Thank but now I didn't. Um, what I what I did was just like watch things in English, but like the things that I liked, if that makes sense, like shows mm. or films that I enjoyed. Um, but I could be doing that like on a daily basis, like every day while mm. having lunch or something. I, I just played something in English, um, yeah. but nothing related to the test, if that makes sense. I don't know if that's good, but well, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's good just for your English. That's the best way to learn. Yeah, English, in I general, think, yeah. in general, just by enjoying it, you know, just by exactly, watching yeah. something that you enjoy. Exactly. Yeah. And as, as long as you do know the exam, you get to know the exam and you know what they're asking for you in each part. If you have the level, that, that should be enough. But um, yeah, it depends. Depends on each student, true. But um, Sylvia, what about you? Um, I've used uh, um, grammar and vocabulary for Cambridge Advanced and Proficiency, this one. Oh, yeah. and this one famous is orange really book. A gold mine because mm. I use it for, I've used it for um, the use of English part because it's so rich uh, with expression with the synonyms with uh, whatever you need for the use of English part and I've also used uh, the um, English in use uh, books uh, from Cambridge I've used the uh, idioms one and the collocations one the yellow and the orange I think one and they were extremely helpful because they teach you some really nifty the things that you can say to be creative, to be um, really not basic, just to be, I don't know, one level above what you are, what you are doing right now. Mm. It's not grammar, it's not new vocabulary, it's just what, how you can say things differently. And mm. uh, I think that for the C2 level, it's important not to say the everything the same and not to say whatever you are thinking in a basic way but in a very creative and yeah creative way which is extremely difficult to yeah to say mm. yeah it's good to have as many options mm -hmm. as possible so you, you have not just a not just one one option, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If I may add just two quick things, um, uh, what I also watched a lot was um, um, a type of video that I think uh, the the official Cambridge channel posted a lot of, which are uh, just um, uh, entire speaking um, <laughs> parts um, mm -hmm. for actual students doing doing the exam. So I watched yeah. a ton of those. I couldn't get enough of it. I watched <laughs> everything that I could find, also for other different type of uh, exams um yeah just to see how how those people interacted and what kind of things they came up with and to also try and analyze for myself okay i wonder if this person got a high mark or if they got mm -hmm. marked down for this or that mm -hmm. um so that was helpful and another thing as maria uh, mentioned um it helps to watch and, and stuff that you already enjoy um like i said i i listen to a lot of podcasts and in particular um, a couple of podcasts that I really like are about uh, movies and um, uh, a couple of, or one about music and um, what I liked about those I mean I, I think you can find these things for any topic but um, they combine a lot of elements that are useful for the listening part because usually it's two or three people um, they are quite knowledgeable about what they're talking about it will contain some element of review um, mm -hmm. because they are talking about a movie or a piece of music or they are expressing their, their feelings in colorful language. Um, and um, yeah, they're also trying to sort of analyze it or even have a little bit of a debate. So those are all things that come up, not just in the listening part, but also in the speaking part where you have to um, uh, discuss, find common ground, maybe disagree with each other. Um, so those type of podcasts really help me. So where people are actually um, knowledgeable about a topic, mm -hmm. uh, preferably something uh, in the in the art or uh, uh, popular culture department. Um, yeah, that that was really helpful and enjoyable for me to um, uh, learn English in that way. Yeah. Also, you will learn a lot of uh, language that you that you didn't know just by context. 
Mm. Yeah, if people are talking positively about something and uh, a word that you don't know comes up, then, well, chances are that that will also be a positive uh, word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Marie, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, for listening, something that helped me a lot was, and it might sound very typical, but listening to the BBC, because, mm. for example, when I was commuting, driving, whatever, um, that was a way in which, you know, you're just taking advantage of time because you're driving, but you're listening to the BBC at the same time. And sometimes with the BBC, I find that it's just very similar to the things that they actually um, put in the test. Like sometimes when I'm listening to the BBC, it feels like it's a listening, mm -hmm. like exercise, you know, mm -hmm. um, yeah. just because they use like fancy vocab and, you know, they speak about very, um, like the topics that they address sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. it can be very suitable for this test, in my uh, opinion. Um yeah, I mean, the BBC is a huge resource in general, but did you listen to one particular podcast or one particular no, radio just station? No, just, just the, uh, the typical like BBC radio, like the, uh, the player on your phone. Right. And, and that was it. Yeah, because I think probably BBC Radio 4, is because that's mostly conversation. I mean, BBC Radio 1's a lot of music for young people. Oh, no, 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 no music. It was like the news and, yeah, the news mainly. <laughs> it could be world service then, maybe the BBC uh, yeah, world I think service. So. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry, I'm not too clued up. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. In the, it's in the podcast that the BBC produces, uh, they talk almost exactly like they do in the in the audio mm -hmm. parts of, um, of the, yeah. the listening um, paper with a lot of uh, synonyms. They will never repeat the same word in, mm -hmm. uh, in, in, you know um uh, a specific uh, part of the audio um it's just very well written really really by the book english basically mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah and you have so many different types of podcasts so many different themes so uh, I, I would recommend you listen to different themes different subjects so you get a range of vocabulary um but i'm very conscious of your time i don't want to take too much i, I think uh, I wanted to ask you, because I think this is a good mm -hmm. question. I think, Michael, you suggested this question, or maybe Jeroen, but um, did, were there any, on the, on the day of the exam, were there any surprises, that, anything, or can you give any tips for the actual day of the exam? Um, let's start with Michael. Um, yeah, uh, when, one tip I can give you is um, when you have your speaking paper first, um, arrive really early kind of to get to know your partner the, uh, mm. when you arrive they tell you who your partner is and just talk to them a little bit um, ha are they more of an introvert or more of an extrovert and um, it, it, it really helps to to have talked before and um, this this kind of brings me to my first surprise Mm -hmm. um because yeah like i mentioned i uh, i tried to be really early i was there uh 40 minutes before before the exam started uh instead of the required 20 minutes um yeah after checking in uh the instructor said uh something in the line of oh great you're both here already we're ahead of schedule so your exam can start in about two minutes mm -hmm. and <laughs> we were like oh okay <laughs> um so yeah that was was the first surprise uh mm. but yeah it, it worked out in the end uh, i would have liked yeah. to get my partner uh get to know my partner a little better um yeah, yeah um another surprise was that the advertised about 30 minute breaks between papers in reality are more like five minute bathroom breaks so you don't really have have a lot of time to relax so or to eat for that matter so yeah really bring a quick bite to replenish your energy and your sugar something you can eat really quickly um yeah because the the rest of the break basically is instructions for for the next paper okay so, very yeah. interesting very very useful tips yeah that's uh and yeah. also something that just came to my mind um, about your mobile phones uh, or similar devices, they are safe kept for you during uh, the entire block of mm -hmm. the exam. So mm -hmm. if you want to quickly check your notes on the upcoming paper, 
um, write them down on, on a piece of paper mm -hmm. or print them because you won't have access to your mobile phone. Yeah. Very good. Very, very interesting. Yeah. Very practical tips, as I said. And just going back to what you were saying about speaking to your partner, I don't, I don't know if you did this, but I, I always recommend that you. it's good to get to know your partner a little bit, but specifically, and it's very simple, just because in the speaking part, people often waste valuable seconds saying, shall I go first or shall you go first? I'll go first. No, no, you, no, please. So just just before you start, start the exam, just say, I will go first in part three or you go first in part two, whatever, but just so you're not wasting those seconds. It seems, it seems like a, a, a detail, but it's actually, it, you know, when you have two minutes or one minute to speak, that's, uh, it's, those seconds are very valuable, so. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, it's it's crucial to devise a little strategy beforehand. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. It depends. Tip. Yeah, obviously, you didn't have as much time as you you hoped you would have or you expected. But that's a uh, at least that. At least you can decide who's going to start. Um, um, Jeroen, what about you? Any exam day tips or surprises? Uh, yeah, by the way, I have to leave in about uh, okay. Well, so um, this is going to be my last answer, I think. Okay. Um, yeah, I, as in general, I would say, maybe it sounds a bit dramatic, but um, just expect the unexpected, uh, because I've experienced a lot of um, just small, minor things that could be annoying, and but I've also heard stories from other people like Michael, uh, or of things that are just going a little bit differently than you might expect beforehand, mm -hmm. especially... Um, well, in my mind, Cambridge, just like the BBC, is like this sort of, I don't know, institute that does everything really correctly and rigidly. So I was quite surprised to find that my exam was in, you know, a little bit of an old, uh, older building with a creaky window next to me and uh, the seats were all different. And it was just a little bit more, well, I wouldn't say ramshackle, but it wasn't as tightly organized as I, I expected. Mm -hmm. um, also, there was some um, there were some things unclear at the beginning, wasn't a clear in which room I had to go. I had to go up and down some stairs a couple of times to find out where I had to be. Mm -hmm. um, right. All those things. Um, and if you are not pre prepared for that, or if, if those are things that, that bother you, then it can really um, uh, mess with your concentration, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, so you really have to be able to let it go or kind of think of ahead of time that you know, anything can happen. Uh, yeah. You know, your breaks can be very short. Uh, yeah, your exam can start early or a lot later. Maybe mm -hmm. you, the speaking partner that you've been practicing with is uh, is sick that day and you have to um, uh, do it with an unknown person. Um, yeah, all those things is really, um, it's really important that you are aware that things can go uh, yeah. differently. Yeah, expect the unexpected, right? Yeah. That's... And one last thing I want to mention, where mm -hmm. we haven't really talked about the difference between the, the computer-based exam or the uh, paper-based exam, but uh, yeah, I would always go for computer-based unless you're a very slow typer or something. Uh, but I think it um, doesn't matter which one you do, uh, but um, make sure you use uh, the highlight uh, tool. So bring a highlighter yourself, marking pen, or use the highlight mm -hmm. tool uh, in the um, in the, the application. Um, practice with that also ahead of time because it's a little bit finicky. It, it really requires a specific mouse action, mm -hmm. but that's just so helpful to try and um, uh, read as much of the answers beforehand. You know when the explanation is running in your uh, earphones. Um, just mark all the words that you think might be of importance. Um, because you're going to have to read them two or three more times. Um, yeah. And that was really helpful for me to just highlight, you know, as much as possible. Um, yeah, I found that a very helpful tool. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, very good. Yeah, the, the, I think um, in the interview I gave to Frank, he gave all the advantages of computer-based exams. I think the conclusion is that it's the best, the best option, as you said, maybe if you're a very slow typer or you're not so... Um, not so comfortable with, with technology or with a computer, then maybe paper-based, but in general, computer-based. Um, Jeroen, you, you need to go? Unfortunately, uh, yes. No yeah. problem. No problem at all. Thank you so much for, for doing this. You really gave some great advice, which I'm sure are gonna, the tips you, you gave are going to help a lot of people. So thank you so much for this. Well, thanks for having me. Um, 
have a good day. And for everyone who's watching, uh, good luck with your uh, exams and exam preparation. And I hope it was, uh, was helpful. Definitely, without a doubt. All right, guys. Take care. Take right. care. See you later. Bye bye. 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 Okay, guys, we'll, we'll continue for uh, just a, a couple more questions. Just if, if you have time, if you're okay to, to mm -hmm. continue. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had a feeling this would go on longer than <laughs> <laughs> we have so many questions. But yeah, just a couple more. Yeah, just two questions. What did you do right in, prep prep in your preparation? And what did you do wrong in your preparation? Just maybe one thing that you think you did right that you could recommend to others. And one thing you would, if you had to do it again, you would change. Uh, Mari, let's start with you. Um, something that I think um, was good and helped me a lot was trying to be in contact with natives all the time. Mm -hmm. um, not only when I was in Birmingham, but also once I was in Spain. So there is this app called Hello Talk, um, and it's basically like to exchange languages. And so somebody who wants to learn your native language, or your mother tongue, um, gets to learn it with you, and then you want to learn their um, mother tongue and so that was very useful because I got to to practice English with some people that wanted to learn Spanish and okay. and that was a good yeah it has also these like voice message uh, tool as well so mm -hmm. it's just really really mm -hmm. useful um, yeah. to just like, be in contact with natives it's like an exchange or intercom exactly yeah, yeah, yeah exactly okay, um, and something bad I guess is I didn't put as much time as I should, but that was because I was, you know, I had a lot on my plate, um, so mm -hmm. it was it was hard to deal with everything. But definitely um, put as much time and effort as possible because it's a really hard text. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you did it. You did it. So you passed. So that's whatever. Against all odds. Against all no, <laughs> I think you did very well. So that, that's great, Sylvia. What about you? One thing you. One thing you did well, one thing you perhaps wouldn't do next time. I absolutely agree with Marie, and uh, I would recommend to not isolate yourself, to be part of a group, as I said before, uh, to overcome to overcome your shyness. Because I am, I was shy uh, before because I said, "What if I made some terrible mistakes?" But it's normal to make mistakes. Everyone makes mis uh, makes mistakes. So don't mm, don't let yourself down when you do mistakes. You make mistakes. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, exactly. For example, yeah. <laughs> everyone makes mistakes. I mean, it's normal. It's and it's not something that you have to. Uh, hide from others yes. so don't be intimidated by others just try to um, see them as an opportunity to learn and uh, as your opportunity to be better at what you are doing right now if it's English or whatever and what I did wrong is I didn't time myself properly for the writing part uh, and uh, it was the part uh, where I got, uh, in which I got uh, the worst results, but because time is unforgiving, I mean, you, mm. I think you have to time yourself as soon as possible, as possible, as soon as you are uh, okay with that because it's the exam it's not like you don't know how to write mm -hmm. but if you write a very good essay a very good i don't know article in two hours that's okay but it's two hours it's not mm -hmm. one hour and a half mm -hmm. yeah. yeah that was the only thing that i think i did wrong yeah, do you have to time yourself? Yeah, I think that's that's a very good advice too. Yeah, Marie, yeah, you want yeah, to say something? Yeah, I was something? I was going to say writing is also uh, the part that I neglected the most, just mm. because it's just hard to sit down, like to get around to sitting down and actually write a piece of writing, mm -hmm. because it's just easier to just grab a reading or use of English paper and just you know fill it out kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, for writing, you really need to sit down in order to get your head around thing um mm. and that was that was hard and so i absolutely neglected it and i regret so much yeah. um because yeah. i could have done better mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes That's absolutely very good good advice yeah thank you and michael what did you do well and what did you what would you have done differently 
Um, in my opinion, uh, what's important is to practice for the speaking paper. Um, so it's crucial to get kind of a study group and practice with them just to chat or to do some sample exams. Uh, because especially for the speaking part, uh, mock exams are important because you kind of get a feel how long two minutes can be mm -hmm. and yeah, how, how long you have to talk. Um, yeah. And what I, I would have done differently in, in hindsight, yeah, I, I would have liked a little more preparation time, but right. <laughs> yeah, in the end, and you did it so uh, yeah it, it, it was a crunch but <laughs> yeah. okay Marie, yeah. yeah there is something that i would like to add in terms of the speaking um something that i did and apparently it worked um was basically you know this part yeah is the two minutes uh, i can't remember the name but the two minutes like monologue um yeah you know you the get the term. questions yeah the long term yeah, yeah thank you sorry um you know you get the question and then you get the uh like the bullet points mm -hmm. um at first, I didn't use the bullet points, but then I did. But the thing was, I tried to link the idea. So, like, if I was talking about the first bullet point, then I linked the second one to the first, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. apparently helped a lot because I got, like, a very cohesive mm -hmm. uh, speech. It was all linked kind of thing. Okay. It Good. wasn't just, like, different things. It was all, like, a whole, and that yeah. helped a lot. It, it flowed. Yeah, well, that that's difficult to do. But, yeah, that's, that's good. It's in... Um, yeah, it, it's difficult to do, I imagine. But if you can, if you could manage to do that, I, I guess it depends on on the, the question and the the ideas. But yeah, it's good good advice. Yeah, excellent. Okay, I just have one more question. It's, um, did you, or is it possible to enjoy the experience? Because I I see so many students they they're very intense with their studies, and it's very they take it very seriously, of course, because they they maybe they have pressure or they put pressure on themselves mm -hmm. to pass but is it possible to enjoy the experience of preparing for and taking the the, the c2 proficiency in particular marie you're, you're nodding your head so does that mean yes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah totally um i enjoyed it a lot i mean it was hard and i was honestly i was so scared of uh, failing the test michael yeah. knows because i taught him i yeah. was so scared it, it was really um really scary because it's something very personal for me english mm -hmm. is yeah. at the end of the day is is a language uh of being like spending a lot of time with during these like uh, past couple of years and so it was it was something very um very important for me also yeah. I was so scared of letting down my friends like my British friends because <laughs> they all say that I'm very good but of course I wanted to to show them that I could do it as well um and also myself you know and yeah. so that was very um it was so scary but English is something that I enjoy a lot and that I love indeed and so um it's, it's very important to enjoy the process, but not only with these exams, you know, with your studies in general, it's mm. important to enjoy the process. If you're not enjoying, you know, studying or whatever you're doing, then there is, there is a problem, you know, yeah. it's important Good, to enjoy yeah. it so that you don't lose uh, motivation and so that you keep going. It's yeah. very important, you know, it doesn't, you know, it's useless to binge English one day mm -hmm. and then you don't do anything for like two weeks. That's, that's mm -hmm. useless. Exactly. Like that doesn't, you know, consistency and sustainability exactly I, I and in order that, yeah. yeah and in order to get that you really need to be enjoying the process is is yes. key exactly yeah i uh, that's what i say about you know learning english in general as you said but it, it's it's different with the exam because it people do take it very seriously and mm -hmm. it is it is serious but it's it's difficult to just kind of relax and just mm -hmm. enjoy it because it's as i said some people need it for you know to, to go to university or to get a job mm -hmm. So yeah. it's more pressure but yeah if you can enjoy the process it's much you're much more likely to to pass i think because you're going to study every day and you'll mm -hmm. you just enjoy the experience also yeah. also in terms of money because the test as, mm -hmm. at least here in spain is mm -hmm. very expensive mm -hmm. it's exceedingly expensive and mm -hmm. so that was something that was worrying me as well because i was like man if i fail i'm going to be mm -hmm. wasting a lot of money mm -hmm. you know like that was yeah, that was more pressure also, yeah. i think exactly it's, it's pressure that you're putting you're putting uh, on yourself and of yeah. course that takes its toll of course yeah 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 it's true 
What about you, Sylvia? Did you enjoy the experience? Or? Yeah, uh, the experience of practicing with others, of um, um, meeting other from all parts of the world, it was really enjoyable because I made some some friends and. Uh, I think you shouldn't really think about these intrusive thoughts. What if I fail? What if I uh, let down my family? Oh, and because you are you are stopping yourself from do, from saying yeah, exactly. it's for myself. Mm. It's for my English level. I am going to take the seat to not my family, not my friends. Yeah. And of course, it's a lot of money because even here in Italy, it's uh, a mm. lot of money. But it's for your enjoyment, it's for your career. And if you fail, I mean, if you fail, just yeah, it's not, the it's not the end side. of the world. Yeah, yeah, it's not the end of the world. Look you at can the just sorry. take it again. Yeah, we take, no, sorry. Uh, yeah, you can take it again and look at the bright side. You you know what you have done wrong. You know what what were uh, your mistakes, and you know what you can do to improve. It's never a failure. It's never a failure. And okay, you are done. Never. It's mm. uh, even failure. It's a learning. In, it's a learning experience. Of course, I, everyone wants to succeed. I mean. Mm. But don't be so harsh on yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even if you are, you can't do it, uh, everything right uh, in uh, on the say on the first day. That was my um, my mistake too because I thought, okay, my English is, I think it's okay. Let's do the C two, and I failed everything the first day. I said, wow, maybe I shouldn't do it, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, little by little, I tried to speak more, I tried to read more, I tried to listen to everything more, and I passed it. So everyone can do it. We are not aliens. <laughs> everyone can do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Like and nobody I... should get disheartened yes. um, because of the uh, the results at the beginning or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as I've said before, failure is not the opposite of success failure is part of success it's part of it's yes. just another step so it's yeah don't beat yourself up if you if you don't pass first time and you, you it's a process mm -hmm. michael i'll give you the you the last word to you so um what did, did you enjoy it? i mean your preparation was pretty short but um did you enjoy it um yeah sure i mean uh, i i enjoy english uh, of course and uh like the others mentioned, uh, getting to meet new people, talk to them a little, and yeah, from all over the world, really. Mm -hmm. And yeah, definitely a, a pleasant experience. I, I can highly recommend. Good. <laughs> Excellent. I think that was fantastic, guys. There's some amazing tips and, and advice. We could continue for two more hours, I think, but um, I think we have to stop at some point. But again, thank you so for, so much for doing this. And thank you for hanging around in the Telegram groups to, to help others. Um, and yeah, thank you for giving up a big part of your Saturday morning. I think a lot of people will, will really get a lot of benefit from your, your help. You watched the whole video. Well done. Put this emoticon in the comments to, to let me know that you've seen the whole interview, because I'd like to know how many of you actually got to the end. Thank you once again to Marie, Sylvia, Michael and Jeroen for all your time and fantastic tips and information. Guys, hit the subscribe button and like because I'm going to be making more of these types of videos. If you also put in the comments any extra questions that you may have about the exams, there's maybe a possibility that some of these guys will come back for another interview in the future to answer any extra questions you have. Join the Telegram group if you like to, to get more, more tips from other students, including some of the students were in the video today. Um, and I'll see you very soon for another video. Take care.